Hi there, welcome. This is Jennifer, so glad you're here. Today I'm going to share some ideas for lining up your stamp layering stamp sets. I've gotten a lot of requests for more videos on that. Also, we're going to create some rainbow shaped cards. I will be using the newest Stamp Timber collab stamp set, and it is with kitchen sink stamps. If you have never used kitchen sink stamps before, I encourage you to check them out. I will link to their collection below. Kitchen Sink Stamps is known for their stamp layering sets that give realistic results and they're easy to follow. This is the new Stamp Temper set called Butterfly Kisses. It's six by eight and you can see that on the packaging that each of the images is kind of color coded so you know which one to do light, medium, and dark. There are three different layering butterflies included and they all get a really beautiful realistic look. I'll be focusing on the large butterfly today. In the set, there are also lots of different sentiments you can put together. You can mix and match the sentiments to make different greetings. My personal favorite is You've Made My Day Brighter Just By Being You. I fell in love with this stamp set as soon as I saw it. I feel like butterflies are a sign of encouragement and they also can be used for many occasions. Now, along with the stamp set, I'll be using a lot of the Simon Says Stamp Saturated Inks. You could use whatever inks you want for today's technique. I chose these because the colors are beautiful and there are sets of three inks available, a light, medium, and dark that work well together. You can buy them in a set of three or individually. That's really helpful when you're doing stamp layering. Throughout the video, I'll mention some other things that I really like about this particular ink. Okay, I'm also using a Misty stamping tool. Any kind of stamping tool would work for this or you can use an acrylic block. For the particular stamp layering technique that I want to demonstrate today, a stamping tool like the Misty is very helpful. I first want to demonstrate how to do a simple stamped layered image with a trick that helps with lining up each layer. So here I have a piece of white cardstock in the first layer of the stamped image, which is the most solid layer. I'm stamping this with my lightest ink. This happens to be the bubble gum color. I next want to stamp the second layer of this butterfly that has a little bit more detail to it. Now you could just line up the stamp on top of this image that we've already done, but here's a trick for you. Take your packaging. This is the packaging of the stamp. I've removed all the stamps from it, so it's just that clear piece with the printing on it. I'm lining up that second image. See that second layer image? It's like bright blue. I'm lining that up with the stamped image we've already done, with the solid image. Once I have it lined up, I'm gonna tape that packaging into my stamping tool. So just put some temporary tape there. You could also just hold it or use a magnet. I just find the tape more secure. Now I'm gonna reach in there and take out that stamped image. You could leave it in there if you want. I'll take that second stamp image, the image itself, and line the stamp up with the printing on the packaging. It is super easy to line up the stamp with the printing on the packaging of that image. It lines up perfectly. So much easier than trying to line it up with that light solid stamped image we did already. Then I'll close the door on the stamping tool to grab that stamp and I can remove the packaging. Now we can go back to our stamp piece, put that in the original position, and now we can stamp this with the slightly darker ink. So this is the middle shade and I'll stamp that right on top and we can be sure that this is lined up nicely. Now this is a pretty easy image to line up without this trick, but I wanted to share it with you because sometimes it's not easy to line up. All right, now let's do the third layer. So I have that third layer image. It's the one that almost looks like a black outline of the butterfly. I'm lining up the black printing on our packaging with our stamped image behind it. I will then tape the packaging in place. I think adding that tape is really helpful. And then we will slide out our stamped piece. Again, you could leave it in there. If you find it easier, it doesn't matter. Now we'll take the stamp itself and line it up with the black printing on the packaging. Close the door on the stamping tool to grab the stamp. Put our paper back in position, and now we can stamp the third layer. Now you could stamp this with your darkest pink, but I chose to do black ink this time for this detail. So I'll stamp this with black and look at how it all lines up nicely. So that little trick of using the packaging to help you line up your stamps is really helpful, especially when you have really tricky stamps to line up. These are not tricky at all, but I wanted to share the tip. 
Now for my video, I wanted to do a bunch of stamp layered butterflies. So I could create like these rainbow shaped cards and I wanted to do four of them. So that meant doing a bunch of stamping at once. So I'm going to show the same process again, but how I do it when I'm multi stamping, when I'm doing several images. It also is good to see the process again to better understand how to use the packaging to line up your images. As we stamp, I'll also share some ways to change up what inks you use for the layers to get different looks like you see on the four different rainbow cards here. Okay, so this is the process I go through to do stamp layering for lots of images. I create a little jig. So I have a piece of cardstock here and I'm starting once again with my most solid first layer image of the butterfly. This time I'm doing it in the bottom corner of my stamping tool. It doesn't matter where you do it at all, as you'll see. Once I have it in position, I will close the door on the stamping tool and I will stamp this with my lightest ink. Once again, I'm using that bubble gum color. You'll see other colors later on in this video. So I'll stamp this solid image and this is my first one. This is gonna help me create my jig. I will take this and use the coordinating die to cut this out. This will not only give me a pink butterfly die cut, but it'll also give me the negative space that I can use as a jig or a template to allow me to do stamping of lots of die cuts. So now we have our jig. I'm also going to put my Brutus Monroe stick and stamp mat into my Misty stamping tool. It's helpful to have something sticky in there, but you could also use temporary tape to hold things in place if you prefer. So I'm placing a new white die cut into that jig and I'm stamping onto this and we know it'll line up nicely. I off screen die cut a bunch of white cardstock butterflies and I can pop each one in and stamp this first layer on all of them. It's much easier to just freely die cut a bunch of white die cuts and use a jig to stamp on them than to try to line up the die cut with the stamping when you're done. So I will continue to stamp this lighter color on lots of the white butterflies. You may notice that I'm double stamping. That's a habit that I have just to make the color a little more intense, but it is not necessary. These colors do stamp and dry smoothly. By the way, here are the five light colors I did for this lightest first layer of the butterfly. We have bubblegum, peachy, lemonade, celery, and sea foam. And I did three of each of those die cuts. Now it's time to come in with the second layer, so a slightly darker color. I'll be using Sweets, Grapefruit, Sunbeam, Limalicious, and Surf. Again, you can see how it's helpful to have inks that are kind of in trios, a light, medium, and dark, because it makes stamp layering easier. But you can use whatever inks you may have. It's sometimes fun to mix and match. Now it's time for that second layer image. I again have my packaging. I'll take one of our stamped die cuts that we've already done, and I'm gonna hold it right behind that packaging, lining it up with that second image. So I'm just gonna line it up there. It's really easy to line that up and see right through it. I'll hold those together and just press it down anywhere on my sticky mat, or you can put it down with a little temporary adhesive. Once I have that down, I'll keep that packaging in place and put some tape on it. This is the same process, just a little bit different orientation as we did earlier. It really doesn't matter how you do it, just use that packaging to help line it up. All right, now I'm going to take that second layer stamp and line it up with that blue printing on the packaging. That makes it so easy to line up. Then I'll close the door on my stamping tool and that grabs the stamp, we can remove the packaging and we want that die cut to stay where it is. So I'll take my little jig and I'll line it up around it. My jig's a little bit big over there on the left, so I'll trim some of that off. Let's just trim a little off there on the side and just put that right around our die cut. And we wanna make sure that jig stays where it is, so I'll put a magnet on it and also a little piece of tape. I plan to do a bunch of stamping, so it's best to have it held down nicely. All right, now we can do all of our stamping of this second layer image, and it'll line up perfectly because we use the packaging to help. Again, you can totally eyeball it if you prefer. I just know a lot of people struggle with getting layering images just right. And some stamps are much trickier than this one. So using the packaging is very helpful for that. I do find that the kitchen sink stamps are really easy to line up and give such a beautiful realistic look. And these butterflies, they're, they're just gorgeous. All right, now I'm gonna to continue to stamp that second layer on all of the butterflies using that slightly darker ink shade that I showed you before. You can also see that by using a jig, you can easily stamp a bunch of die cuts at once. 
So I continued to stamp the second layer in that slightly darker color on all of our butterflies. And you can see how they're starting to look very realistic. All right, now it's time for the third layer on these, and I'm using the darkest color inks. This is Taffy, Mandarin, Citrine, uh, per Perfection, and Ocean. Once again, we'll use the packaging. This time I'm going to show you a little bit different way to line it up. I'm putting down the jig anywhere you want in your stamping tool and putting down one of our stamp die cuts right into the opening. Now we're taking that third and final layer, the darkest outline of that butterfly, and lining it up with the stamping we have in there. It's very easy to line that up and then we can put tape on the outside of the packaging to hold it in place. Now to make sure I really line up my stamp well with that black printing on the packaging, I'm just gonna slide a piece of plain white cardstock in there so I can really see it. It's so easy to line up your stamp with the packaging. I then close the door on my Misty, remove the packaging, and now we can do our stamping. On a couple of the sets of rainbow butterflies, I stamped that darkest ink on top. So we have the light, medium, and dark ink layered together with all of that detail. It really gives a beautiful result. So we have pink, orange, yellow, green, and blue. Look how beautiful those are. Now on one set of these butterflies, I'm gonna pop them back in. I still have that third layer image lined up. I'll use my anti-static powder tool and I'll stamp that image this time with clear Versamark ink. This will be just clear sticky ink right on top of that dark stamping that we just did. And now I'm adding a clear sparkle embossing powder from Judikins. Any kind of clear sparkle powder would work. This one has iridescent glitter in it that really picks up the color behind it or around it and gives gorgeous shine. It's definitely my favorite. So I'm sprinkling that on and then we'll heat set it. So the sparkle embossing powder will only be on top of that dark third layer inking that we did. I did the sparkle embossing on one of my rainbow sets of butterflies and you can really see that beautiful shine. This is definitely my favorite set. Now let's do another variation. This set of butterflies only has the first two layers stamped, the light solid image, then the medium second image. For the third image, I'm using black ink. This gives a lot of contrast, probably looks the most realistic, and really stands out nice and bold. And it's fun that this looks very different than the other options. Just by changing up one of the layers, you can completely change the look of your stamped image. I did one more variation example for you. It's the one on the left. I skipped the first layer, that solid soft first layer, I skipped that and only did the second and third layers with the medium and dark inks. So you have that bright white highlight in the middle because there's no ink there. That's in comparison to the one on the right where I did the light, medium, and dark inks. So if you really want something that stands out with bright white highlights, you can even skip a layer such as that first solid layer. This is especially helpful if you don't have many inks because you only need two colors for it. All right, so here are our four sets of butterfly. Along the top, we have the original one where we did the light, medium, and dark inks. The second row there is the one where we skipped the first layer so the white shows through. The third row is where we use black for the third layer. And the fourth row is where we added the sparkle embossing powder. So now I have four sets of butterflies to make four cards. I just thought this would be a fun way to demonstrate how you can change up your layering stamps. Next, we're going to create our shaped cards. Notice that the butterflies hang off the top of the card. So I want to make sure they're strong. So I decided to die cut a bunch of white die cuts from scrap white cardstock. And I glued one die cut behind each of our stamped die cuts. This just gives it strength. You definitely could skip this if you wanted to. But I feel like when you put in the effort on making a card like this, you wanna make sure it holds up nicely. Because I have rainbow butterflies, I thought it'd be fun to do a rainbow shaped card. For this, I need a large circle to put my rainbows on the edge of, and then we'll cut the bottom off. I used a large five and a half inch circle die from Simon Says Stamp. It's part of their nesting circle die set. If you do not have a large circle die, look around. You could use a bowl and trace that and use whatever size you have. I needed two die cuts per card. 
I also have a piece of scrap cardstock here that I cut to five by seven. This is the size card I wanna stay within so that my card fits in a five by seven envelope. So I'm just using that green piece as a guide. It will not be part of the card. I'm placing my circle kind of towards the bottom of that green guide. And we're gonna put our rainbows along the top and sides of that circle. I'm putting liquid adhesive on the back bottom of the yellow butterfly. That's the one that will be in the top middle, so that's a good place to start. And I'm making sure it is getting glued to that circle, but staying below the edge of that green cardstock. Remember, that's our guide. We wanna stay within the green cardstock edges. Next, I'm going to do the pink and the blue because those are the ones that'll be on the opposite ends. Then we can fill in between. So I'll put the pink one over here, making sure that it doesn't hang off that green cardstock edge. The only glue that is there is behind the wings, gluing it to the white circle. All right, now we'll put the blue opposite of that, making sure it doesn't hang off the green edge. And then all we have to do is add the orange and the green between it. And I only put the adhesive and the back center of the orange and the green, because later I'm gonna add some dimension behind the wings to give it a little oomph but it's totally up to you. You could just glue it down flat. So now we have this nice rainbow arch and when everything's glued down and we trim off the bottom, we know it'll fit in a five by seven envelope because I have that five by seven guide behind it. I like to do that whenever I do a shaped card to make sure it fits in the envelope because after all, we need to mail our cards. Now I'll cut off the bottom and it looks like our butterflies form a rainbow shape. To add a sentiment, I'm putting into my Misty stamping tool. Now my greeting will have the word brighter in the middle and a line of text above and below it. So I'm starting with brighter first, and then I'll do the first line of text above it, and I'll stamp that with black, and then line up the next one below it. I don't like to mount all three into my stamping tool and stamp them all at once because I like to get the sentiments close together, really close together. And that's hard to do if you put all the stamps in at once. So I think it gives better results to stamp each of the three separately. And I did this on three of my four cards and on one of the others I used with heartfelt hugs instead. Now we need to create a back to this card so that it can stand up and there's a place to write a message inside. So I have another circle die cut of the same size. Again, you could trace and cut your own. And I'm putting a score line about a half inch from the edge. So you can see there's a score line there and I'll fold that. Now I'll fold this back and forth a few times because this is really just a hinge for our card. So we want it to kind of move freely. I will then flip my card front over. I'm gonna put liquid adhesive above that score line. And then I will take this piece and line it up with the circle on the back of the card. And now we have a folded line up there. So we're just lining the circles up, pressing that down and then we can cut the excess of that circle off using scissors or trimmer. So that little hinge that we created with the score line will allow our card to open and close nicely and it'll allow it to stand nicely. So there you can see how it stands on display and that's when it's really the best because it looks like a rainbow. I wanted to add a little bit of dimension behind the orange and green butterfly wings. So I'm taking a foam square and folding it in half so it's doubled up and tucking it behind the orange and green butterfly wings. I'll leave the others flat because they're tucked behind those butterflies. I just feel like this adds a little more interest to the card. I also am a big fan of sparkle, so I added some gems right to the center of the butterflies on a few of my cards. So I did four right where the body of the butterfly would be, and these are just clear crystals, so it doesn't distract from the stamping that we did. It really just allows it to have a little bit of sparkle when you tilt it in the light. All right, let's look at our four completed cards. This is a five by seven envelope and it fits perfectly inside. Notice that when you take it out, you can easily put it on display. It stands up nicely, and there's a place to write a personal message inside. Also notice how those gemstones really catch the light nicely. Now this is the version where we stamped all three layers with light, medium, and dark ink, and then we did the sparkle embossing on top of that third layer too. This is definitely my favorite of the variations because of that sparkle. 
All right, here is the version where we use black ink for the third and final layer of the stamping instead of a colored ink. You can see how this is really bold and shows a lot of the detail. I didn't add any gemstones to this because I felt it was bold enough as is, but you could definitely do so if you wanted. On this next one, I used the sentiment that says with heartfelt hugs. Nice thing about this design is you could use any sentiment you want there. Now this is the version where I just did the basic stamp layering with a light, medium, and dark ink. I didn't add any embossing powder or anything to it, but I did add those little crystal gems to the center. You can see how they catch the light nicely and add a bit of interest to the card. And finally, we have the card with the butterflies where I skipped the first layer of stamping so that the white would show through. So I just did the stamping of the second layer with medium ink and the third layer with dark ink. And you can really see more contrast with this and it just gives a nice highlighted look. I again added crystal gemstones to the center for a bit of sparkle. I think this is my second favorite version. I'd love to hear which version you liked best in the comments below. It really just demonstrates that you can change up what you use for your stamp layers to get different looks. If you're interested in what I use today, I link it below in my YouTube description, but be sure to go to my blog where there's much more information and you can even bookmark cards and videos. At the end here, I'll link to a couple other stamp layering videos. I hope you have a wonderful day and get some time to craft.